Okay, so the next big you know part to do is obviously the engine. Now, there's a couple of little things that are slightly different from um, perhaps normal aircraft engines you work with. First of all, it's a radial, which means we have all these cylinder blocks around the outside. Usual thing, have these to go together, and we've already done this one. We just sandwich them together, um, get as best job as you can, and line them up, uh, and it will save a lot of grief. And we'll, we'll tidy that up later. Then what we've got is all these interparts which are going to fit one behind the other which makes up the entire engine. Now it's far easier to paint these as single items than it is to build it all together and then try and get a paintbrush in there to work around to pick it out. The great thing with this particular engine, um, as we can see over here, is it it's going to fit almost as a separate part onto the front so we can build it as a separate add it on a little bit later and do final assembly. So what we can do is do all the paint work and build it up and make it look all nice and weather it nicely to do that. The other thing as well is the prop, um, as you can see here, is a one piece. This isn't just the way it's moulded, this is how it is in real life. It's actually, there's no gearbox, there's no actual mechanism for uh, actually angling the uh, pitch. Uh, it's literally just one piece metal. So that's a, a nice little touch with it. Because of the way we're going to be doing this one, um, and you might notice uh, if you've done a little bit of homework on the swordfish, that the actual um, front area here is like a brass ring on them. And we've got a close-up photo here that shows it um, as this brass ring. Now the thing with it is, um, is obviously painting that is somewhat tricky to do in, um, or to give a very nice metal effect in something like an acrylic. Now there is acrylics out there which are very good at what they do, but I must admit I do like using uh, things like Alclads and more of the sort of this type of colour which is a uh, burnt metal which is like a brassy colour anyway and by the time we get it on and we give it some a bit of weathering and things like that we can see so some of this is going to be done with obviously lacquer and enamel type paint uh, others are going to be done with acrylics but obviously if you do them in the right order you can overcover them and things like that so the first thing we can do uh, we need to cover a clean up where we've put these two together and sandwich it together now an easier one for here is just to pop a knife blade in when these are totally dry and just sort of scrape it up and down and you can get rid of any seams quite easily like that and because it will follow the contour of the the ribs if you like on these nice air cooled engines like this that it just saves a bit of work so you want to do it quite roughly but not to the point where you're you know if we just bring you in this camera as well with both of these working close but, so we got them all nicely cleaned up, but they're still quite rough and rustic. Okay, so we're just sort of doing this scraping technique. And if you took your time, like I did when I put this together, you might be able to almost eliminate all of this sort of almost flash we're making in here. But what we don't want to do is get in here with a file and flatten it off, otherwise we're going to end up with a flat spot, and we want the ribs of this to show through okay so it's just one of those fast quite easy jobs to do I'm just going to work our way through these there we go we're through so that one done already now when you look at it this back part here um, obviously we're looking at museum aircraft and things like that it's very hard to tell with this aircraft because most of the photos are black and white of actually what color these were during uh, actual operational uh, type requirements so I'm guessing here what we will use we use some of these and use a little spread effect um, we what we're going to do is paint these black so we'll just grab a a bit of kitchen roll here to protect our surface. We just move those out for the moment. Okay, now we're going to spray these and not actually do them hand paint them purely because it will want a nice even finish over this and then we can pick out the details afterwards. So if we're just going to come in a second, just a little bit of black. Okay. problem here that's better <clears throat> okay we're just gonna spray it all black and what we're gonna do we're gonna pop back with some dry brushing to bring this to life what we've got to make sure is we get in this from all the angles because of the way it is 
and the way it's going to go together. You want to make sure you just keep twisting and turning this and play back and forth. Just to make sure we get in. Just cut to where we're drawing that down. Just dry that off a touch, just like that. Now, if I just um, kind of bring up my picture as well, so we know what we're looking at here. big one there we go so as you can see the inside uh, parts if you're looking at the other screen there the inside parts around here uh, are basically showing as being the sort of uh, copper color of this outer ring and then these pipes obviously leading in uh, to the actual top of the manifolds there of the actual engines as well they're going to be sort of the grey to copper colour so we can probably get away with spraying that all of this perm, uh, burnt metal now obviously because if it's being an alclad you can come along just pop it straight onto it uh, and use it like that but what it has to be is a very nice smooth polished surface so what you want to do is make sure if you have got one of these as a polishing one we can get away with no primer but we've got to make sure it's, there's nothing on this whatsoever. So we'll just clean this off. We'll do the other bit of spray work first and we'll come back. But what we can do is just polish this up. So if you use the polishing side, you can go around and polish this one up very, very nicely to give us our, you probably see it's nice and shiny, a perfectly smooth finish. So if we pop that out of the way, just pop the lid on here. Now, depending on what, which photos you see, you might see that we've got these other parts here which make up the front of this engine. They all tend to be different colors and different photos. So it is quite hard to know what they actually are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna try and make them a tiny bit of a different shade. So what I'm gonna use here, got a little bit of gray. Let me just give that a good old shake. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do is just adjust the color just a fraction with every pass that we do. So what we're going to do, we're going to add the black back in the colour cup again. Quite a bit of it. Okay, then what we're going to do, if we use an oldish brush, that I haven't got anything too horrible on it. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a tiny bit of grey, just like this. All right, then we're going to come along and we're just going to add it into this black. Just to change the shade of it just a fraction. Okay, so there we go, that's that one done. Now I'm hoping this isn't going to be too much of a, a change. So we just blow through so we know we're using it. As I say, it's got to be subtle. So if we just use a pair of these, or a pair of... this way maybe better so there we go we're going to do this one first there we go so if we just pop that down there like that okay <clears throat> Coming in with a drop more of that grey again, straight into the colour cup. Okay, there we go. We're going to grab this guy here, <coughs> push through that colour. Okay, and we're going to come back and we'll do this guy. <coughs> With that colour, if we place it over, I don't know how you can see, but it is actually quite a difference of colour on that one. Now that's quite tricky to do, so we just put that one like that. Okay, and then again, in with the grey. Now obviously, because each time the paint is going down, because we're using it, and we're adding grey, we're lightening as we go all the time. 
but we're getting a nice colour. Okay, so the last, this little guy here. So this is what I mean by sort of um, tonal effect. Now I know it is, I'm sure I make up a lot of these words for my own personal use like this, but it's what I'm trying to do is avoid that block colour. If you know what I mean, like this one here is totally different to these other colours that we're using. The idea behind it is when you look at something, instead of it just being a block and looking very kit-fied, it's got a slight different tone to it, or a different colour like this has, and then hopefully it will just give us a lot more depth. So when you look at the item, you look down at it and you think, wow, look at all those different things in there, because they're a slightly different colour. So it's more like an artistic effect than what you're actually doing. So you're not just coming along, perhaps you do in the old days, paint it with a brush, job done. This, you get a nice effect. And by the time we give it a little bit of dry brushing in a moment, just to give it another little bit of depth, hopefully it all works out, stands out quite nicely. And you can see all the differences. So what we do, we just let those bits dry off for a moment. We're going to paint this guy here as well. And then what we can do is we can do these back ones as well, because they're going to be the interior colour and things like that. And then we can get them dry brushed them together. Okay, so we've got the owl cloud on the go here. This is the pale burnt metal, which is almost like a goldy colour. So we're just building up the layers on the outer ring here. So we're doing the inside, we'll pop up the uh, pipes and that, but what you don't want to do is like that, got a bit of a problem with the flow. So we just want to build this up very, very gently to start with. Okay, and then as we get going, what we do is we're gonna add a little bit of black to this mix, just to give it a more dirty look, because at the moment it's far too gold and far too clean, if we're honest. So what we want to do is just sort of get it to the point where we're happy of how it's looking and then we'll weather it up and give it a, a more sort of well used heat uh, look to it and how we do that is we just add a little bit of colour to this system that we're doing now so we're just going to do the inside and the outside obviously alkali is extremely delicate so we've got a nice colour here, although it's a little bit wrong. So, but as I said, it does for a start. And then once we're moving, we can change it a little bit. And for that, what we're going to do is add aluminiums to it. So we're just going to do this part here as well. We've already started on. So we just finish off doing that. Straight in there. As I say, one of those things, just take your time with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of the actual uh, burnt iron. Now this isn't owl clad, although we could do, we could use, uh, add a little bit of jet exhaust to it or something else like that, or a little perhaps a bit of magnesium, a darker color. But what we're trying to do here is basically just uh, change its color, just a tiny, tiny amount. So actually I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I've changed my mind as I tend to do with these things. We're gonna put a little bit of jet exhaust on it. Cause this has got quite a, uh, a, a metallic -y colour. You can see it's where it's separated on the bottom. So what we do, we just give this a good old mix. I'm going to say I haven't used it for a while and as you can hear the ball bearings just come free which helps to mix this stuff up. So okay, we'll just give this a good old mix round. Okay, we'll see what we've got. As I said, it will be too strong to use it on its own. So what we've got here is a mix, and we're probably going to make a 50-50 mix here with already what we've got in the colour cut. Okay, so we're just going to pour this in. It's in just like that. Good old mix in the cut. Okay, so it's one of those things. Don't be too afraid of using it. We'll blow through what we've got and then we're just going to lightly put this right the way over. Inside as well. Okay, and we've changed it now to this type of colour, which is very nice. So we're just going to make it a little bit more darker. So 
I prefer this colour a lot to what we had before because it's got more of a heat type of look to it. So we just cut to air, dry it down. Back over. I think by the time this has had a wash, it'll look more of it. So I prefer that colour to this one we've got going over here because it's far too goldy. So we'll respray this one as well. looking. Right, okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So we're just going to come in neat now with this burnt colour again. Okay, and we're just going to use this as like a wash effect. Quick pass right the way over it, just to change its colour, just a fraction. Okay, and we're going to do the same on here, just a little tiny pass. On the inside too, to act like a, a wash effect. And there we go, that's that colour now. I'm happy, and it's one of those things, it's artistic license guys, don't think you're going to come in here and, and get it, but there we go, that's the type of colour I wanted. Okay, now I've got to do the same on the exhaust, which is one thing I should have really done now, but it's the same type of thing, but as you can see, it gives us a, a nice effect just like that. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Now, to be honest, I've got quite a bit of fumes going on here. So what I'm going to do now, clean up all this alcohol, get some windows open on the extractor on, clear the fumes. Okay, on. so here we have the uh, all important engine. Now, what I've actually done is I've sprayed aluminium um, on for the actual main prop itself. And also we've done the actual area where the, the spin is going to attach. So that's those bits done. I've got them on here because we've got alclad. It tends to get scratched very, very easily. So what I've done just for the moment, we've got the, the main engine section, as I said, the block, if you like, for want of a better word, and we've glued onto it the back, um, which is the uh, manifolds going on there. That's done, and with the other bits and pieces. So what we've actually got here, I've already attached the uh, spidery looking guy onto this one. If I give you the call outs for these, that's numbers uh, D6 and D8 on there with um, D25. And they all sort of clip in together to make uh, this little guy. And then what we've actually got is just to touch a little bit of glue just on that one. Okay, and just on here and on here. That's those on nicely. Okay, so we can just leave those just to one side. Now this engine block we've got itself as i said it's very difficult to know what to do for the best because you know when you look at these things they look fantastic uh, in a museum but if that's quite how it was on the real thing well perhaps we'll never know so what i've got here i've just got a, a bit of a brush tiny tiny amount of silver on there now using bolt gun metal or xf56 is a good one so we're going to knock off pretty much everything off of this one Okay, and then all we're going to do is very lightly just brush over the tops of these heads to start with. The heads of the engines, just to give them a little bit of depth. Okay, and then just right the way over the entire thing, just lightly flicking it. Not pulling in too heavy because obviously we don't want to leave too much on here. So we're just going to run across these across the top. I'm hoping it will give us, we've got it all together quite a nice look to it. Now looking through um, some detailed photos that I've managed to scan off the net, <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be that much of a uh, wiring system onto this one. So I'm, I was going to originally do it, but you can't really see it. So as I said, I'm not too worried about it. So what I've got is actually this rear section is going to fit onto here. Now this is the engine mount, which is D22. Okay, so that's going to be quite straightforward onto here. So we'll just Bit of glue, just touch and flow, let it capillary action, take it right the way around the outside. Okay, and then we can mount this engine on. Okay, give it a bit of a wiggle. Okay, so that's our engine section on, just like so, looking pretty nice. Okay, now we can get this front section on as well. Okay, so same thing, just going to come in. Some glue just going onto the inside. 
Same thing, let the capillary action do the work. Okay, working like a star, obviously we've got the point to the top. Okay, and then what happens is, is that all of these should stick to the front of each engine block. So if they don't, they might need just a little bit of a nudge to get these into position. Okay, happy how that's sitting. So you can probably see on, if we bring you in on both close-ups, you can see how it's looking all pretty nice. Quite happy with the way that is. I must admit, it's come out quite nicely. Um, nice bit of depth to it, if you like. Okay, last one we've got on here is this front section. So we'll just do it as a push fit for the minute. And there we go, that's showing that engine very nicely, just done like that. So I'm quite happy how that's going to sit. So you've got two options. You can either leave this perhaps front metal section as a loose fit or you can glue it on depending on how you want your prop to come on and off. Um, mine I'm quite happy how it's all going to go. So what we're going to do we're just going to put a tiny bit of glue just into each one of these holes. Obviously we've um, protected paintwork here so much so we don't want to mess around with it too much. And there we go, that's the engine section just on there. And then hopefully this should just push on front. I'm not going to push it all on because obviously we're all very wet. But as you can see, I hope it's uh, showing well on camera. It's nice. And because we've got this different types of paintwork going on here on the front, we've got in here obviously the matter, the greyer type of blacks and things like that. It gives us an all round sort of nice look to it. So by the time we get <coughs> the manifold on the front, something looking like this, he says, hoping this is going to push in. It gives us this type of effect, which I must admit, really, really impressed with. That's come out a lot better than I originally thought. So by the time we get the rear cover onto it as well, and the other bits and pieces, it's looking really, really nice. Okay, so as you can see, um, policy back here, we've got it on its gear, it's not glued, but we're all there. We've got the canopy still a loose fit, so we're not worried about that. Now what we've done, we've put the wing sections together, Basically the same as we do all the others. Sandwich them together, quite straightforward. But what we've done, we've taken our time and we've allowed 24 hours for this to dry. Now the reason for it is, if we get any sink marks in the leading edges of these particular wings, it's going to be very, very noticeable. It's not like it's metal and things. It's supposed to be fabric, so we want it to be somewhat soft and conforming. And obviously we've got all the ribs showing through on these and these details we want to do. So we've taken our time with these wings and we've gone round and we've just cleaned up all little areas inside little dents and things to make sure they're a nice fit because all of this is going to be on display because it's in wing fold mode. The other thing we've done <coughs> is that we've put on the outer spars here um, which is obviously part of the the wing section so we get the right wing for the right one so what's going to happen is this is going to come in here and it's going to lock in just like so and obviously we get our sort of wing section trouble is though what we need to do is make these extremely smooth on the outside now you could just use normal filler and come in and fill up these little cracks and away you go but a very quick technique i thought i'd sort of share with you we're going to take some super glue this is sort of just the medium one Pop it all down in there like that. <coughs> now all we're going to do is use a cocktail stick. Okay, now it's quite thick this, and we're just going to blob it around here and drag it back. Okay, and use it as a very quick filler down in this area because it's pretty straightforward just to pop it in. This is great for little tiny gaps. Obviously if you've got a big one <coughs> you can use something like this type of technique as well but what we do is come down okay super glue all in there. Now you could let that naturally dry just like so or you can come along got some kicker here okay give it a squirt hold it upside down important to hold it upside down like this because what happens is because it wettens it uh, and makes it start to flow it will start to run in all the areas if you hold it down it'll droop downwards uh, a bit like a stalactite and then it sets so there we go that's dry on there 
just give that a blow and kind of a quick feel. Don't push it too hard because what tends to happen is it gets a skin on it, then it dries. So we just give that a couple of moments to go off. And then what we can do, we can sand down in here, sand that all off. Same thing, we'll come back then either with a little bit of Mr. Surfacer to take care of any small little gaps, or with some black acrylic paint and tidy those up. The reason for getting these into position and having them on there now is because obviously the underside of the wings here is going to be painted white. Now the thing with that is, obviously the top is going to be camo uh, and things like that. So what we're going to do is basically spray the top half, completely do the camo work, then we're going to mask it completely off, then do the undersides. Same for the underwing as well. The lower wing sections work just the same. Obviously this top half is going to be camo, undersides, and things. So what we want to do is do the camo work, get them all sorted out and done, and then we can come along. Or you could do it vice versa. Because we're doing this with the white, you know, you might want to put the white on second, because on first, because obviously it's harder to show with the pre-shading and things like that. So there's different ways of actually doing it. Personally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do all the white work first, then we're going to do the dark. It's a little bit harder to do because it's a little bit more masking involved than doing it the other way. But it's personal choice. It's just that I think it would be a lot easier. So what we're going to do... Obviously, we've got over here on this one here, the tail section is obviously on, but it's not attached, as we know. It's just sort of sat here. Okay, so we'll just click those out at the bottom. The tail section like this on the real aircraft is painted like this, then is installed onto it. So this area will all be white on this one, apart from the very back, the spine area, and up to the nose. And then obviously, underside will be the lighter colour, uh, and certainly the rudder is going to be the lighter colour as well. Exactly the same in this top section. So what we're going to do now, we're going to install the clear glass area, which we could do this as a loose fit if you're a little bit concerned. It's a very nice fit on here. It's going to go in here very, very nicely. So what I would suggest, if you wanted to, you could spray it um, separately, and that's the way I'm going to do it. So in a minute, I'm going to mask that one all up. We're going to go around, check all our edges, make sure we're all smooth, finish sanding up those points in here, which we might be able to start on just now. Okay. We can just come into these, sand these up, make sure we're all smooth and happy. And that's the thing with these, got to be smooth because we don't want any edges and things because they are just going to show up far, far too much. And once we're in, we can get going. And we'll get some stronger files in there, but that's taking care of that crank that ran around there. With a bit of paint on there, you won't see that at all. It is the trouble with super glue. Obviously, it dries completely clear. You can't see exactly where you've gone with filler. You can see where it is. That's why you need the, a bit of acrylic paint on there. But that's taking care of that. So I'm going to do the same on these ones as well. Get those glued in, uh, super glued up or filled. Do that one. And then what we do, check it all over. Make sure we're all happy. Get some primer on this now. And then we can start to move forward with the build. So we've moved on a little bit. Um, as you can see here, we've masked up and placed on the canopy. Pretty straightforward, as I say, just following the grooves going around with that. Okay, we're going to have that as a soft fix. I want to be able to take it off and put it on there just to clean it up, make sure it's all clean and things like that. So basically we're all done. This undercarriage isn't fixed in, it's just sat there. It's just going to be easier for painting because we can put it down, as we said before, things like that. Other things we've got on with, we put the wings together. Now, this is really straightforward, and that's why I didn't go too uh, into detail about it. All we've done, sandwich the wings together, okay, and then we've left it for 24 hours for the glue along this leading edge to totally go off, and then we've sanded it and polished it as we've done the fuselage and everywhere else. The thing with it is, really, really noticeable. It's supposed to be fabric area and things like that, so if you do end up with little dents in it and things like that, it's going to stand out a lot. So that's what we did. We've also come along here, and as I say, we've fitted in these uh, the external parts here, put them in, sanded them flush, because on the real thing, when you see it in photos, it's completely flush. Mm -hmm. There is no join between the top and the bottom, so that one's done. We've installed the actual starting with the ribbing and things like that from the main wing, and there's photo etch parts down in here. Now, it's a bit of a tight fit getting these in, but it's well worth sort of persevering with it. And what we're going to do in a minute, we're going to run some Mr. Surfacer in here and just sand these in, make sure we're all nice and a positive fit. These photo etch pits, pretty straightforward to go in. Have a look at the instructions they say about it. But the only thing is, you might notice I haven't glued them in yet because we want, we're worried about, obviously, it not going in the lower wing properly and things. So I'm going to do them as a loose fit for the moment. But obviously, you need them to glue them in to get them in the bottom here. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to take care of this in here and make that a very nice flat joint in there. It's pretty good as it is, we just want to make it a little bit better and then we can move on with the actual painting. Also together we've got around all the wheel hubs, anything that's going to be done and painted. Check some seams, you might be able to see on here, not totally 100% on this seam here, so that's why I've got that out, I'm going to check it again. So what we're going to do now, clean down absolutely everything, get the cameras over to the spray bay and we can get going with the paint. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the white work all completely first, do all of that and then we can mask up as is required and things and then we can then sort of do the camo work afterwards and obviously on the top and we'll just take care it should be quite easy because we can do these parts as a separate same goes for this top area uh, of the one here we've got black at the front camo work at the back quite straightforward so we're going to do it all in sections once we've got all the camo work done and the basic of the paint work done we're going to put a clear coat on to protect it for handling then we can start adding all the other little details and bits and pieces but it's going to be quite complex because obviously this is fabric we're going to do a little thing where we're going to try and lighten the panels up using pre-shading and lightning and then we're going to give this a, a bit of a rub down as well right the way over here with a very very fine sandpaper to try and give it some texture uh, to the actual wing section and things like that so let's get everything cleared away and moved into the spray bay 